to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, and this is the the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We uh, we are on a on a search for adventure. We're on a mission for adventure. If you're going to be a Christian, God has you on an adventure. Uh, the reason why we love the virtues, the virtues of justice, self mastery, prudence, and fortitude, uh, those in particular, because they they prepare us for the battle that God's calling us to. And then the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. But, you know, I live uh, in Florida half the time and in Hawaii half the time. When I'm with my friends in Hawaii, uh, I, don't, I don't paddle out in 20-foot-plus surf anymore. But back in the day when I did, uh, that's a very dangerous thing to do. It's about, it's about the most dangerous thing you can do is to surf big waves. But before you paddle out, you know, you, you wax your board, you sit and you time the sets, you look for what direction the swell is from and the intervals, and you, and you just check everything out. You, in other words, it takes prudence in order to go out and paddle big surf. The same thing is here in Florida on, in the evenings. Sometimes it's really cool. I'll sit on my lanai and I'll look over towards the space coast and I'll see they're about to launch a rocket into space. And, uh, and uh, they actually do that. They, you know, I can see the rocket go up and now I even see sometimes the rocket lands. Um, God requires us to be bold, but you can't be bold without prudence. The problem is so many people think prudence uh, means sitting on the couch and being cautious. Uh, you don't need to be. You don't need to be prudent dude, unless you're going to be bold. I mean, when I go skydiving, I make sure uh, the chute's been packed right. I make sure I have a reserve chute. I know the winds. I know the what. I know. I know what's going on with the uh, with the uh, the weather. When I when I fly an airplane, I know I do my pre pre flight checklist. I'm being prudent because I want to be bold, and we're supposed to be bold as Christians. But I got to tell you, something happened to me the other day. I was walking along the, one of the neighborhoods here in Florida, just walking along innocently, and this gate just attacked me. It ferociously attacked me. I was just minding my own business, and this gate just swung open and just attacked me, tried to knock me down and drag me down. But we all know gates don't attack people, right? Gates don't attack people. But Jesus said the gates of hell would not prevail against us. That means we're supposed to be attacking the gates. We're supposed to be... We're supposed to be men of, of, of boldness, uh, men of manly virtue, and men that, are, men that are advancing the kingdom. The kingdom of God is wherever God's will is being done. And we want as men to advance uh, that mission and challenge men uh, to live. A, and the way you advance the kingdom is by living a life of virtue. Justice, self-mastery, prudence, fortitude, faith, hope, love. That's how you advance the kingdom. And uh, we have someone with us today. I'm, I, I have heard about him for years, uh, and I want him on my show. We finally uh, made it happen. Uh, Kevin O'Brien, who is uh, one of the four men who began uh, the Men of Christ movement. I think it's one of the biggest conferences in the men's conferences in the world in Wisconsin. Kevin, aloha and welcome to our show. Thanks, Bear. I'm really excited to be here and to talk to you. I love the way you opened <laughs> up your show, the, uh, talking about virtue, you know, that, that strength that we all need to grow in holiness. Well, yeah, and you know, I was thinking about prudence too. Now, you played for the Bills, the Buffalo Bills as a linebacker. And, uh, you know, you had a lot of courage, obviously, to do that. But uh, I'm aware of, uh, at times, you were very imprudent. I, I uh, <laughs> recall a certain instance with a certain uh, running back. You want to tell us about that? <laughs> You call it imprudent. I guess it would be part of the job of, of trying. Uh, yeah, but, you know, we were playing. I was with the Bills. I played outside linebacker. This is back in 93, so I'm dating myself a little bit. And um, had the opportunity uh, where drop back and pass. And uh, Barry Sanders, if you all remember Barry and his quickness. So I was one of those uh, linebackers that were trying to tackle him. <laughs> and unfortunately, he went one way, and then I went the other. So I missed him. And, wow, but did, you, did you go the other way on purpose? No, <laughs> I prudently tried to do it, but imprudently didn't make it. Uh, no, it was, and it was fun. That whole experience actually it was even in the uh, 
that my uh, my pro career. I was I, I grew up Catholic, fell away from the church, and in, in that experience, the loneliness because there was a lot of loneliness there, and there's a lot of pressure on on trying to succeed. That uh, I started to enter back into the faith. Uh, and it was a fascinating time in my life to come back and to really try to grow in my Catholic faith. I, at that time, really, I would say wasn't Catholic, uh, but uh, I was more uh, a Bible uh, type of uh, just reading the Bible. And, and some of the things that we do in sport and you being in sport as well, there was this unity. There was this brotherhood that took place, uh, which was fascinating for me, which actually brought me back into the faith. So it was a great journey, even though I imprudently tried to tackle Barry, it did bring me back to where I am today. Good. So, so let's let's dig a little bit deeper into that area. So, uh, there's so much pressure in the pro in the pro world, yeah. and back in those days, there was a lot of craziness too. Oh, right? there was a lot of craziness. But uh, not saying there isn't today. But back in those days, it seemed like it was more the, a little bit more crazy. But uh, in that in that context, here you are. You're facing uh, overwhelming uh, challenges just to get to the college level. And then, the, then to be then to be on a pro football team, uh, overwhelming challenges, tremendous amount of pressure. Uh, how? What? Where? Where were you? Uh, what was this process of you? Re, re, were you? Re, did you return to Christ first and then return to your faith, or what was that? What was that process you went through? That, that's a great question. I, mean, I actually share this a, a lot when I'm giving talks on on the faith journey. One of the things I always say is, I wish I had the faith now. Uh, that I have now back then, because it would have given me the strength I needed uh, when you enter into that high level. Because first of all, you know, being a skinny kid out of Detroit, it was only a dream, right? To, my dream was to play pro ball and to actually be able to walk on the field with, you know, Bruce Smith and Jim Kelly and Andre Reed and all these all pros, all Hall of Famers, Daryl Talley backing him up and Cornelius Bennett. So it was a fascinating thing. And as you entered into it, there, I'm going to be honest, it was a lot of fear. I was uh, I was lonely. You were always every day literally being threatened to be cut because you made a mistake. So uh, in that uh, fear and I would say loneliness, uh, I started to reach out and started to really think I was always, I would say, close to God. So it wasn't that I'd left that, but I wasn't close and I didn't really understand our Catholic faith. So I didn't use the power, uh, the power of the sacraments and all that from a strength perspective and just a holiness perspective. You know, as you grow in holiness, you grow in strength. And Amen. Uh, but, say that one know, more time. Say that one more time. Yeah. As you as you grow in holiness, you grow in strength. And awesome. think about that. Yeah, it, it, it's very powerful. And um, as I went through that journey, uh, probably a lot like yourself, uh, it was a forging process, you know, and uh, I started to build strong friendship with uh, guys on the team. And then uh, just through that process being cut, you know, going through that experience of losing the opportunity. So this was your dream. And I remember there was a part we were playing in the American Bowl over in uh, in Germany. And again, this because I didn't have a faith element here. I remember looking up. We're playing in Germany at Berlin, playing against the Vikings. And I looked up just after halftime and I looked up and I said, is this it? So in my mind, I had arrived to the pinnacle of what I thought was great. And I literally felt empty inside. And it was just a weird thing. Yeah, it was just a weird thing that you, I I don't know, that God put me through that I went through. And uh, in that, though, in that emptiness, I started to fill back up with Christ. You know, I remember, too, that when I won my first world title, I just remember um, standing on the beach. And, 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 you know, all the crowd was there. I got my trophy. And then everybody left. And it's just me and a friend of mine, Professor Pohaku Stone. He said, hey, I I got a couple of good cigars here in my truck. And I said, I have a bottle of wine. And. It was just him and me sitting and enjoying that moment. And it meant a lot to me, but it was like, okay, now what? It's like you've done that. Yeah, and so I I totally get that. It it, it shows you the vanity of vanity is always vanity unless you're pursuing, uh, you know, the the, the adventure of a relationship with God. So then what happened next? You're, You're there. I so, so I get cut, yeah. right? So one of the, the so as a, so as a rookie, right? So you come in out of nine, so this is back in 93, you get, I got cut. And I remember Marv Levy, the head coach at that time had come up to me and he said, Kev, you know what, you know, we, you're just a little green and uh, we, we need to, you know, make the cuts and blah, blah, blah. The, the process that you go through. And I just remember driving home and uh, I was so dejected, right? So down. And, uh, and I said to myself, I just can't go out this way, right? I I felt like I hadn't given it my all because there was an emptiness. There was a fear 
right? There's a lot of men I guarantee right now that are operating under this, this cry. I wouldn't even call it just this, this uh, oppression of fear instead of just like lifting it up and giving it to God. Uh, I didn't do that at that time. And I try to carry this all by myself. And uh, in that inspiration and that loneliness and that fear, God did inspire me. And then I, I kept coming back, went into the CFL, uh, went into the NFL Europe, and then came back and went to the Patriots. Well, so that, that, okay, let, that whole experience. We'll talk about the wicked back. That's some powerful words that you just said about about the fear that that uh, uh, is innate. I think in in men. Um, this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. I'm not supposed to say um. By the way, I've been told that. So I'm supposed to just say this is the Bear Wozniak adventure with Bear Wozniak. Uh, if you want to find out more about Kevin O'Brien, you can go to menofchrist.net. And if you want to hear more about uh, the Bear Wozniak adventure, you can go to Deep Adventure. Dot com and you guys you can go to YouTube and share this the, if you wa- if you're listening on EW10 or on one of the podcast apps that's great but you can actually go and watch this on YouTube and it's a great way to share it with younger people is to send them a link to this YouTube we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, and my my co-adventure guide today is is Kevin O'Brien, former NFL player and the, one of the main instigators be, behind the huge uh, men's conference in Wisconsin. He's one of the four founders of Men of Christ uh, .net. and we're talking about this this you know I get this thing about fear. It's almost always like there's a lion or a tiger at the door, right? Like yeah, men have this. There's there is that fear of of not um, living up to your your kuleana, as we say in Hawaii, your your responsibilities, whether it is to pay bills, or uh, or your or, or uh, career advancement, or just hanging on to your job, or rejection by um, by maybe the person you love the most in your life. But one of the greatest fears I think men have is fear of each other. Mm. You know, afraid to uh, have true, uh, yeah, friendship, manly friendships, yeah. Um, and we need we need we need to break down those walls. But tell me more about this this what what happened to you? you so you're, you're you're saying you're not going to go down like that. You you'd been cut, and then you so I've been you, cut, and you yeah. know so now I uh, so you're cut right. So you get into the NFL, you get out. Now you got to try to get back in, and uh, I end up getting picked up to play in the CV, CFL Canadian Football League. And at that time, the U.S. had some teams. And this was this is now I did a little bit with the uh, with the bills in regards to the faith element. But when I was out in Sacramento, it was interesting. I ended up listening to I was right going right into practice. And on the on the uh, TV was a guy named John Hagee. Yeah. John Hagee is a non-denominational preacher. Yeah, and he was yeah. bringing the heat. And I really was attracted to that. So then, again, t- it took my faith life one step further and it just started to, again, bring guys together because that there was a comfort you talk about. I, I really kind of yearned for that type of true friendship to overcome right. that fear right. that you can always go through. Right. You being a world class athlete as well. You have that. And uh, and that that unity really eliminate or I should say reduced and in some regards eliminated it. So did that came back, started going through my w- girlfriend at that time, wife now. I remember asking her, I said, would you marry me if I wasn't Catholic? And she said, no. And I said, why not? And then we started this this discussion. And that journey, right, was there. My brother, uh, surprisingly, was discerning the priesthood. So one of the things, so then I I go through my football journey, right, and I'm coming closer to Christ, still not really truly back into the Catholic faith. And my brother and I, uh, during a, a Christmas vacation time, I remember being home. And we got into the battle of abortion. And at that time, I had this thought like, well, I don't agree with it, but I don't think it's a right you have uh, to take away from somebody. I was just, again, I, I was away from the sacrament of confession, wasn't thinking right. So people My should brother have the now, right to choose. You're saying people yeah. should have the right to choose. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that was the thought process, right? And so this is all part of the whole process as you're going through the conversion back. And uh, he's now a father of nine. So he's a psychologist. So he gets a little bit, you know, in the clouds a little bit. And one of the things he said to me as we were having this heated debate, we're both very Irish and passionate people. He said, Kevin, no one has a right to kill an innocent child. And that like arrow of truth hit me like, yeah, right. He goes, you know what your problem is? You need to get back to confession. 
Mm. And then that was it. So those that are listening, that if you haven't been to confession, that was if I had to say what was it that brought me really back and allowed the scales to fall off my eyes and enter into the Catholic experience. It was that he, his his nudge and push and kick allowed that to happen. It's a powerful it's powerful and so unique to the Catholic Church. Uh, and I've heard. Time and time again, men saying that it was the moment that they went to confession mm. and what happened there, the grace, the forgiveness and the grace that was released yeah. there that brought them roaring back, you know, uh, uh, to the Catholic faith. But again, there you are. There's this kind of fear of man. You're going to have to go sit in front of someone. Yes. And, well, here's what I did. Yeah. You know, Bear, it's interesting. You talk about I, And I, I love trying to explain this to guys because I know there's somebody listening right now or many listening that haven't done this. I literally circle. I don't know how many times I kept going around the church. I just kept driving. Yeah. I was sweating, <laughs> you know, literally like pers- so that, that yeah. reaction, that fear, what we're talking about of yeah. entering into that and humbling yourself. But I'm going to tell you, when I did it, I, I literally floated out of there. And it was such, I, I've come to realize the beauty and the gift of that uh, wonderful sacrament. Yeah. You know, it's reconciliation to the church to the Lord, to yourself. But I, you know what I liken it to is, uh, and we were, we were just filming Long Ride Home, by the way. By the way, I got to talk to you about this. But we were filming Long Ride Home, see, you know, our motorcycle reality show. Yeah. We were filming it in Hawaii this last August. And we had, a fa- we had Father Scott Searcy with us, my, my, my parish priest. And all week long, we were saying, we're going to go skydiving. And about twice a day, I would say, who here is going to go skydiving? <laughs> and they're like 16. Guys are crazy. But there's 16 men in the cast and crew. We're going to go. We'll go skydiving. Yeah. And uh, But when we actually showed up, the whole thing was none of us were going to go. We we're going to leave Father <laughs> Scott there out on the limb, you know. So when we go to go skydiving, I go, um, you know, I'd really love to go, but I suffered a major paper cut this morning. I won't, <laughs> won't be able to go. One by one, all the men backed out. And then he went. And then he and then he went and he loved it. He was he, he's the most relaxed guy I ever saw jump. But but uh, the thrill of it. And so for me, skydiving, especially you know you, you, you every time I've jumped, I've I've been like really apprehensive, um, determined but apprehensive. And and when I when someone, someone says to me, I want to go skydiving, I'll say, Yeah, let me shake your hand. You want to go tomorrow? Yeah. Well, let me shake your hand. And if it's cold and clammy, I know they're serious, right? Because it's sweaty. real, yeah. And so yeah. that's what confession is like for a lot Good. of people. That's a great analogy, yeah. But that's what confession is like for a lot of people. Like they're really <laughs> nervous and scared. Uh, but you just, what you do, men that are listening right now, this is what you're going to do. You're going to drive the car. You're going to find where confessions are or you're going to make an appointment. And then you're going to do this. You're going to go and you're going to get a cup of coffee and then you're going to go get in your car and then you're going to start driving there. And then you may not have taken good notes, but you might sit in the pew for a little while, be there 15 minutes earlier and take notes. And then you're going to walk over and then you're going to sit in. And then all of a sudden you're jumping out. You don't even like the whole oh, yeah. skydiving experience yeah. is you show up. Okay. Go through the briefing. Okay. Oh, now there's a shoot on me. I wonder what this means. And then, oh, now we're walking out to this plane and oh, the plane's taking it off. And oh, there's fewer people in here than there was a few moments ago. And then all of a sudden it's your turn. <laughs> So just do that. Just get in the process. It's like before yeah. you jump, a lot of people have this rhythm. Lean in, lean out, lean in, lean out, and jump. It's just men. Right now, just right now, make a determination when you're going to go to confession and go. Because you know what happens is you know what it's like. The minute it's, it's scary, especially if you're being genuine. The minute you jump out, it's the most exhilarating experience yeah. of your life. Yeah. And then the most peaceful moment when the canopy opens and then you get perspective on your life. You see things you didn't see before when you're up there. And then when you land, you feel like I'm ready to conquer the world. That's confession. There you go. Right. Well, what a great analogy, you know, and just being able to go out and do that and overcome that fear. It's so what happened, what happened? say, just do it. And what happened to you then you went to confession and so I, you know, and really that was the step. So as I was walking through it, I, I just became to start, I asked a question. And one of the things I always, uh, you can't love what you don't know. Right. And I didn't uh, learn the faith growing up. So I didn't right. know. Me neither. So I didn't love it. Right. So I started to dive in uh, to the faith and just understanding. And I was just so intrigued. And now I was able to receive because I was in line in union with uh, with God or father. Again, I was back in the church because it was probably a good 15 ish years since I went to my last confession. So 
And one of the things I just started walking in and I got involved in men's ministry when I was out in Massachusetts, uh, you know, got married, did the right thing, got it, got married. And now as uh, my wife and I, we have seven kids. So we've got a, a herd of, of our own. And in that process, I just started really studying and we would um, we would do uh, trips from Massachusetts back to Ohio. And I would listen to cassette tapes on the catechism, oh, on cool. just different talks. You were beautiful. hungry. I was you know, hungry. That's yeah, a great I, word for it. I was hungry. I was. I wanted to know what we. But believed. you know what? I, I got to tell you something. I'm reading, and you know, I've been really studying the life of Saint Paul, and uh, and uh, reading lots of scholarly books, and then just other books that would be probably not so scholarly, and some by Protestants. And uh, the book I'm reading now is a brand new book uh, that just came out by uh, David Limbaugh, Russia's brother. Oh. Okay. But as I'm reading through it, I'm having to sift. Like, okay, here he's he's preaching uh, by faith alone. Here he's preaching by. His, Scripture alone. Here he's preaching against Peter. Here he's saying that Jesus had brothers. You know, mm. and so I'm having to work my way through all this stuff and discern it. I was talking to a friend of mine that actually had really led to the Lord uh, last week. Uh, I'd led him to the Lord probably 30 years ago. And uh, he's now a Protestant. He goes, you know how it is when you're listening to the radio or you're listening to teaching? You always have to kind of, you know, sift through it to get out the good morsels. And I go, yeah. no, I don't. Because as a Catholic, when I read Catholic teaching, the catechism yeah. makes sense. Amen. It, yeah. it, the the, the uh, Athanasius makes sense. Augustine makes sense. Thomas Aquinas makes sense. St. John of the Cross makes sense. John Paul II, Bennett makes sense. It does. You're not always having to screen and filter and get out the good morsels. So I, I was teaching recently in Notre Dame last two weeks ago, and they were going, this, this, this surgeon goes, what, what is it about, what is, when do you feel closest to the Lord? He said, because when I'm doing surgery, I really, really feel the presence of the Lord. And I said, it's when I'm seek, when I'm reading truth. I just feel so oh, close to Oh, is that beautiful? Yeah, now we've over, we, we got we to gotta cut away. We'll be right back with more. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Kevin O'Brien, one of the founders of menofchrist.net. We're going to talk story more about that and a new thing that's happening in the men's movement. <clears throat> okay, guys, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we started off at the beginning of the show. I was talking about how a gate attacked me. Several gates attacked me all at once. The fact <laughs> is, though, that we know that's not true. Jesus said the gates of hell won't prevail against us, and that means we're supposed to be on the attack, and we have one of those attacking-type linebackers with us, Kevin O'Brien, former NFL player with us. Uh, hey, Kevin, I got something. I got a favor to ask you. Sure. You ever, you ever heard of this kind of rookie guy called Jeff Cavins? Oh, yes. I he's know got, Jeff well. well Great guy. Got, well, yeah, if you know him well, you know he's a bit of a rookie. Hardly knows <laughs> the Bible at all. You know, hardly knows Yeah, right. So Jeff and I are up to no good. Uh, you're biking? I'm assuming you're getting on your motorcycle. Yeah, but, what, what, motorcycle. but you're involved. Oh, I'm involved. <laughs> yeah, so what, I, what I'm thinking of is I got, got inspired this morning. Maybe it was... I don't know, the bad pizza I ate last night, or maybe it was the Holy Spirit, but this morning I get up, I'm going to be talking to Kevin O'Brien. So check it out. We're going to be leaving Cocoa Beach, Florida on August 2nd or 3rd, and we're rolling thunder up to Lansing, Michigan. Wow. We meet up with the Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Club, the Knights on Bikes, the Iron Deacons, the Emmaus Riders, all the Catholic bikers we can find are going to meet up there on August 6th. August 9th, I'm taking the ferry. We're going to ride out and take the ferry across to Milwaukee. Oh, wow. Do you think you could kind of get some sort of gathering, impromptu I gathering of men? Well, I can do two things. We actually have Father Mike Leitner. This is, have you ever heard his name? Yes. He is a six, I don't know, six, nine, 300 pound uh, former offensive lineman priest up in Green oh, Bay. He, yeah. He's got a bike club, a, a Catholic. I don't well, remember. Well, he needs to, you need to put me in touch with him so I can interview him and. Have them join us. You know, there's no question. And we'll get a group of guys because it's interesting that you talked about because Jeff mentioned that when I I was in Minneapolis as well, and we were talking about this. He talked about the tribes and how his bike uh, crew is taking – they're going all over the place. I thought that was yeah. awesome. Yeah, and that's what basically what the only difference is, is between what he's doing and what I'm doing is we bring a camera crew with us, right? So yeah. anyway, we're going to go We're going to go there. We want to go to Milwaukee. Yeah. Where are you located – I'm literally right outside of Milwaukee. Because we're going to go about we, 20 minutes. We want to roll in there and go to the. Uh, what I'd love to do is do it. Have us get permission from Harley Davidson or something and have it right there. 
right in there, right oh. in there, right in there, or right somewhere. But anyway, you think about it. But we're going to be coming there on about noon, around two or three o'clock on on the ninth, and let's uh-huh. do some kind of a uh, some kind of a re- rally. I don't even know what oh, day of the week that is. And that's then, a great idea. And then Jeff and I are going to roll thunder from there to Minneapolis. We hope to do something there, and then uh, all the way to Alaska. We're going to well, go up. Really? To, yeah, we're well, going to go up to Calgary and meet up with a priest that he knows there, and a big men's meet up there too. So. Um, yeah, so why don't you why don't you do that? It would be just I so will put cool. that on our hit list and rally the troops for you. That's just so cool. Well, we're talking with Kevin O'Brien. Tell us a little bit about your what what uh, oh, let's wrap so so then you 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 found the church, you became ferociously just hungry for more, and then you begin to see this need uh, to gather men. What what was it about? You know, it's interesting as you, as you become um uh, the scales, as I said, come off. You start to see clearly. I just saw in, in my professional career, I saw so many men um, walking around in spiritual rags. And I saw the wow. power, you know, this idea, the power of bringing them together and how it lifted them up. There's just men right now, they need to be inspired. I think many of us, you know, feel just kind of beat down a little bit. So how do you do that? And uh, I was involved in a, a, um, a ministry out there that actually started using the conference experience to bring men together, right? And it, it was a, a very powerful thing. So we left Massachusetts in 2005, came here to Wisconsin, and there was nothing going on, but just this, you know, burning desire to unite men. Okay, so wait uh, one second, wait one second. Right now, there's men listening to this that need to really lean in because God's tapping them on the soul, sh- shoulder and they need to do what you did. So just listen in, men. Listen to what Kevin's about to say. I just got chills when you said that, Baron. I'm just going to pause for a second to, to add on to what you just said. You know, Christ said there's no greater love than for a man to lay his life down for another, right? And sometimes when we hear that, we think, oh, we've got to be in some, you know, foxhole somewhere. Well, if we take a step back and say, well, what does that mean? It means our life is where we put our time. So when you give your time to what the ministry that you're doing, the ministry, what we're doing, we're showing our love for Christ. There's no greater love than for a man to lay his life down for another by giving his time for another. And we do that. So what I would challenge the guys to think about, where are you putting your time? Is it into TV? Is it into the Internet or is it into something that will make a difference? How do we become you talked about virtue before? How do we become magnanimous? Right. This idea of desiring greatness to make a difference. And that's really what we're striving to do, because it is hard. It is hard to evangelize men, because especially American men, we're not used to this intimacy. You talk, We talked about this unity that we're all like deep down want. But like going to confession, when you get together, I see guys in these dynamic men's groups and they start talking. Their face gets red. They start to sweat. They're uncomfortable. So there's a yeah. there's a physical reaction to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So as we as we we did this, we saw the power of the unity and the first step of evangelization is creating that experience. So men of Christ uses the conference as a bridge, as a tool to bring men home. So we create a very powerful environment for men to walk into for us to first of all, let me step back. One of the things you and I are called to do is to go out into the deep. Right. So, you know, one of the things that men of Christ is we talk about the tap. What do I mean? The tap on the shoulder, the personal invite. Right, right. And this is the interesting thing. You talk about virtue also. What do we need to do with virtue? We need to wrap it out, right? We need to have these good habits. Well, we're called to reach out. Some guys, because of the fear of not really learning the faith and understanding the faith, they'll lock down because they fear it. But if you tell a guy, hey, just go invite your dad, your brother, your neighbor, your friend, your coworker to a conference experience that is almost in a sense more sports because the way you walk in, it's at a big, uh, big uh uh, hall uh, and it's really done well. It's not it's, the church basement, you know, or no, you know, it's, it's where they would be intimidated to go. They'd rather go yeah. to a yeah. It's like going to a show in a sense. So you walk in, so you get all these thousands and thousands and thousands of of guys hanging out with their sons, and you're like, wow, okay. And here is the beautiful thing, Bear. When you see this, Christ said we are like sheep. It's amazing when you create and it's dripping in Catholicism and I could spend an hour giving you all the components of it. But when they walk in, they have this powerful experience. The first talk is always about a, a, a conversion experience because a lot of these guys that are coming are first timers and are like they need something. But one of the most and it bring a tear to your eye. One of the most powerful things that we see is when you see see thousands of men lined up for confession. There you Literally, go. 
lined up and you can hear almost hear the chains dropping from these guys 50 years away from the sacrifice. So yeah. it, it is a praise God. So what we do with this is we're using this as a tool to bring men back, enter into the experience to be healed. And the ripple effect of goodness flows through the head, the man, the father, and into the family. And you see it impacting our society and impacting our, our, uh, our parish. So it's been a beautiful, beautiful well, thing. Now this this is a show people will listen to years from now. But uh, this, this, in this coming uh, your conference is held in the in the in the winter, right during Lent. Yeah, March thirtieth. It'll be March, this year, March thirtieth. Yeah, March, for us it's still winter. <laughs> I'm in well, Wisconsin. Yeah, you know, I, that's when I, I always get invited to speak at men's conferences in the winter. I'm like, why why do I have to leave Hawaii or Florida? Yeah, to go? Right. Why and I realize it's because it's Lent. They most of them most yeah, of the conferences are held yeah, during Lent. That's exactly right. But um, but you know, I got to man up just to show up. You know, right? But, <laughs> but um. So th- th- that's on a Saturday usually. Saturday. So men can <clears throat> yeah, come in. To- they, can they? Can they? Is there a hotel or someplace nearby they can stay if they're? Oh yeah, you know, being in Milwaukee, so you know, coming in, we've got even a young men of Christ. So the other thing we're trying to do is outreach specifically to build friendship, Amen. right? Amen. Yeah. So this idea of creating this powerful environment, you get guys to the sacrament, they start to build friendship, and then we drive them into these dynamic men's groups. So Friday night we have a young men of Christ, eighteen to thirty-five, Far out. and then a lot of those guys roll into Saturday as well, and then Saturday is the big day. And then and so there's hotels, there's everything. Yeah. So so how many people come? Uh, came last time. Oh, this year, you know, last year, close to 3,000. We're looking at, you know, trying to get to that 4,000 mark. That would tap out the facility that we're at right now. And then we would have to take the next exponential jump up from a volume, which one of the things that we're going to be doing a lot with Men of Christ and those listening, this idea of outreach, of not holding back, not allowing fear to prevent the Holy Spirit to work through you to reach out to guys. Every so man really- needs to bring another man with him. The, same, the, guy you, the guy that you brought last year doesn't count. He's right, supposed to bring right. someone else with him. We're talking That's about Kevin right. O'Brien. We're talking about the Men of Christ. Uh, their website's menofchrist.net, and their big conference is March 30th. I hope someday I get to be invited, Kevin. I'm laying it out there. Mary, you're on the list. Yeah, you're I would on love, the list I would for love 2020. To yeah, maybe I can get my, my sons to come with me too. But uh, anyway, we gotta, we got to go. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You can go to Men of Christ. Dot net and and go to this conference even if you're i don't care where you were the first conference i went to i flew all the way from hawaii to florida to attend there's no reason why if you're in uh, anywhere you are in the world why you can't come to this event we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure Bear, I've got to. I got to roll out here. I got to go. One we fortune. Got we had a death. Min- in, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we had a death in uh, one in my son. Okay, we got to be careful not to talk right here. Okay, it, it'll mess up my producer because he post produced. So now we're going to give it a big long pause. Sorry. I don't. I'm going to give it a longer pause to make sure he knows. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, uh, Bear Wozniak. We, we want to remind you, I always forget, you know, we had a, the coolest review on Long Ride Home the other day on Prime Video. The, the person who watched it said, I've seen, I caught four or five of the episodes on EWTN, but I never got to watch the whole se- series in sequence. And you can watch Long Ride Home. It's a, the season one is 10 episodes, and it, believe it or not, it's only the second show ever from EWTN to make it up on iTunes and up on Prime Video, also on Google Play. So you can, uh, while, while you're having Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas, whatever, put on Long Ride Home and have the, have the family power watch it. It's really a great series, especially if you watch it in sequence. Uh, and season two, uh, we're, we're bringing to fruition. Hopefully it'll be ready in the next few months to, to launch on EW10 and then iTunes and Amazon Prime. But the reason we do our show the way we do it uh, it's the only the second show in EW10 history to ever go up on the Armed Forces Network. Is because we want to get outside the church walls, get outside the Vatican walls, mm. get outside any Christian walls to people who may never even been in a church. They're going to dig it. They're going to get it. This review said, I, I got to watch three or four of the episodes, but not in sequence. And, and uh, now I got to watch the whole show. And there's nothing better than, than the, the fumes, the road, men uh, uh, talking in a manly way. And... Uh, 
and uh, and the Lord. You know, Jesus and bikes. What can't be what can be be wrong with that? So, besides that, if you go to iTunes and Prime Video and you watch it, it helps support the next uh, Long Ride Home show that we're going to do because we everything we do we do on faith. And so, if you'd like to do that uh, uh, and 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 post a review, we'd appreciate it. Also, go to our website deepadventure.com. Men, we have something that's so cool called Bears Man Cave. You got to go to our website to join. It's a private, it's a secret Facebook group. You can't join by finding us on Facebook. You got to go to our man cave, and it, and it involves a ten dollar a month contribution. So you got to man up a little bit. But when you do that, you join our private Facebook group, and there the men really share their lives, and I share, uh, I'll share uh, thoughts throughout the week. Then about every two or three weeks, we have a big Zoom video chat meetup so everybody can see each other we can dialogue with each other and right now we're going through my book deep adventure the way of a heroic virtue which is specifically intended for for uh men's groups the chapters are about five or six pages so we want you to go to our website help support the ministry also if you sign up for our our email our newsletter once a week we email you the radio show the morning before it even airs on ewtn all you gotta do is forward that to to someone you're evangelizing um, women, are you listening? Chance for you to forward this to your to your brother-in-law, your your son, your husband, and they'll dig the show because we have people like uh, Kevin O'Brien on the show with us. So, Kevin, what's going on there in the background? I'm watching you on YouTube. On oh, yeah, YouTube. I'm going like I got the little kids. We're in the process. I'm trying to get the got little guys running around here. And try, I, <laughs> you can see me running around. So we got to leave in a few minutes. Okay. But, uh, I love so that. I love that. just wanted to follow up and finish up what we're talking about here today. Yeah, go for it. So we're talking about the conference March 30th in Milwaukee menofchrist.net tell us more and then tell us about so, this new league year that you guys yeah are. so let, let's you know, and i'll quickly kind of go through this so the idea right that the some guys would be like ah oh, just going to a conference no 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 it don't it, it, almost the word conference doesn't um explain what it is, it is a, a, a band of brothers coming together to learn their faith to enter into their faith at an entirely different level and to build friendship uh, so one of the things that we find in this experience, both of all, you know, I can give you a book on playing football, but you don't understand the game until you get on the field, right? Yeah, I, try, I and, tried that. I read a book on X's and O's when I was in eighth grade. No idea until I got on the football field. What well, and, and that's the thing, right? So when you, from a faith perspective, if you're on the sidelines, you're not on the field. This is a gritty thing. Our guys are gritty. They're tough. They, they, cause it, you have to, the uncomfortableness that comes with the outreach and talking to guys and trying to understand it and, and battle with all the thoughts that come with it. It's, it's just something that, uh, that has been a very powerful experience. If not only, with the men, but also using this as a tool to reach out to my young boys, to unite my wife within the family. So it's something that we've integrated. There's an integration and wholeness with it. So guys come, have this powerful experience, and then they, they enter into these dynamic men's group at the local parish level. And at that level, they're learning their faith on a regular basis. They're coming together because there's a powerful environment that they're starting to build friendship. What do you need to build friendship? You need time. Guys are now building and have good time together. And then now the next step up for us with Men of Christ is what you had asked about, which is this unification. How do you unite all men's ministry. So uh, there, Matthew Christoph, uh, Robert Tummeyer, Father Larry Richards, uh, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, and another guy with Men of Christ, Matthew Strub, who's a colonel um, in the uh, in uh, the army. He, uh, we've come together to you try to unite all Catholic men's ministries throughout the country. It's called Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance, CMLA, and we literally don't even have a website yet. We're just moving that fast. We had a summit in Milwaukee. Milwaukee in June of this year, and it was amazing. We rapidly put this thing together. We had guys as far as Singapore coming in. That tells you the hunger that men have it. And we really have this desire to create an outreach format for us as Catholics to bring men back into the fold. Yeah, and you know that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, right. we, we, we can we can learn right. from each other and then collaborate with each other and bring out each other's gifts. The things that I see, too, in the men's movement that's so cool is you see this kind of best practices element that people bring to their work life and their career. You see them bringing it into their ministry. So there's this diligence. There's this follow-up. There's this there's, uh, pursuit of excellence, you know, that, that is attractive. When, when you, and, and then what happens after they go to the conference? They don't see each other again until the next year or what? 
Well, that's why this idea of, of getting men outside the conference and into a dynamic men's group, because we don't want it to just be an annual thing. They can't, unfortunately, you know, you don't really build friendship unless you get into it. You don't understand the game until you get on the field. So this idea of we've now got over 40 men's groups, we want to get to 100 in each each parish that we have within the diocese so that one of the beautiful things that we're finding within the, the men's ministry movement is that guys are now – they're coming together. They're actually getting more involved in the parish. They're lifting up the priest as well, protecting him, helping him do what he's called to do from a leadership perspective. So it's been a, an amazing transformation uh, for us because here's the thing. where the If the men lead the family, this is a great stat, 93% of the wife and the kids will come into the faith if the father leads it. And that's the thing that we really are striving. Strike the shepherd, scatter the sheep. We're trying to help lift up our shepherd so he can bring and lead. That's a key word. Not just kind of participate, but actually lead uh, is uh, is something that we're striving to do. I was just with the Napa Institute in Washington, D.C. about a month ago, talking about the church scandal. And uh, one of the interesting uh, statistics, you know, not not just a random thought, but actual statistical statistical fact is that when the women are the spiritual leaders in the home and the man is just kind of a, a bystander or doesn't participate, about 30% of those, those children will stay in the faith. But here's an interesting thing. When a man and woman go together and the man, the man shows leadership and the man and women go together and uh, participate in bringing their children, in, uh, growing them up in the faith, about 85% of them, this, this study shows, will stay in the faith. But here's what's fascinating. If the woman doesn't participate at all and just the man, there's hardly it regist- hardly registers on the radar. Right. The number of, of the, the percentile moves like from 85% stay in the faith to 83. So if a woman alone leads, about a third. If a man and a woman lead together, about 85%. If it's just the man, it's 83%. So men, uh, there's something that, that's measurable, something inherent in the way God's wired you, in the way God's made you. And uh, if you want the biggest heartbreak of your life, don't lead your family in the faith. If you want to see your children's lives deteriorate and go directions you would do it, wish that they wouldn't, then just sit on the background. But you're supposed to be slaying dragons. You're supposed to be the spiritual leader in your home. And that's where we have Kevin O'Brien. Kevin, if they want to know more, if someone doesn't have a men's group in their church, not a big men's conference, just a men's group, can they reach out to you and you can give them some guidance? Yeah, you know what? Definitely. Kevin at menofchrist.net. Feel free to, to or even give me a call. I mean, I think five, I, I can, you could give my number if that. Well, actually, uh, just email me, but probably yeah, be email. easier for everybody. Yeah, Kevin at menofchrist.net is the easiest thing for people if to remember. If you don't have a men's group in your church, it's your fault. Yeah. And there's so many wonderful programs. Here's the thing. And, and I know you're getting ready to wrap up. The yeah. key thing here is for guys, they need, we need guys to lead it. There are programs out there that are plug and play, make it easy oh, yeah. for you. To oh do yeah. It. Like uh, that man is you. That man is you. All That's you, one of the best is, programs out there. All you, no all you need is one other friend, two other yeah. friends, and then you gather and, and it's just like, it just, it just kind of works itself. And then we have the man cave, this little thing we do. We have the bears man cave meetups every two or three weeks on our zoom video, but then our, our men, also start their little cigar nights in their, on the back yeah. deck of their house. You know, It doesn't right. have to be in the church. It could be in the back deck. Kevin O'Brien at menofchrist.net. You need to go to the uh, incredible event they have there on March uh, 29th for the youth uh, in, the, in the evening and March yeah. 30th for the men. And the youth can go to both, the young adults, I should say. So men of Christ, uh, um, join together. We need to be a brotherhood. I know the best friends I have are the friends that I motorcycle yep. with and, Harley, and, and, and surf with. Men that you do stuff with. So come and do stuff with us. And the best stuff you can do is share the gospel. Thanks, Kevin, for being with us. Bear, you're awesome, man. I appreciate it. I can't wait to see you in August. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Right, aloha, everybody. Care. Till next God week. Bless. Viva Cristo Rey and aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.